that, God. Let's bring our voices together in this.
Justice and praise 
Thank you, Lord. We're going to sing that again in just a second. But 
in this time of prayer and fasting, let's lay out before God right now in this moment what we're believing for, that break for that we're uh, that breakthrough that we're praying for. This is the time where, as a community, we can press in in faith. So, if you have a need, if you're believing for a breakthrough, let's lift our hands right now. We're going to pray and then we're going to sing. We're going to sing. We're going to sing that He is all we need. I thank you, Lord, right now. Come on, church. Let's begin to press in, Father. I thank you that you. Are a healing God. I thank you that you are a providing God. Lord, I thank you that you are the rock that does not move. Lord, I just pray all of those things that are distracting us to the left and to the right, those things that look like they're big issues. Father, I thank you that next to you, they are nothing. Lord God, we are fixing our eyes on you. Lord, you are all we need. You are all we need. We're pressing in right now. Come on. Let's lift it up. Let's lift it up. Make it your prayer this morning. Nothing else. Father, right now we lift up every health issue, Father. We lift up, uh, right now we just speak into that, right? There's, there's so many uh, uh, reports coming through and people who are facing challenges that the answers aren't clear. Well, Father, I thank you that you can bring clarity. You can bring clarity. So Jesus, right now, let your peace reign in this place. Let it reign in this place over every situation, every circumstance, every report, every worry, every anxiety. We lay it at Your feet this morning. Your feet this morning. Thank You, God. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. I can sense the faith in the room this morning. How good it is we worship a God who answers prayer, amen? Amen, come on, let's lift it up this morning. Awesome. Hey, well, it's so good to have you here this morning on this fantastically, brutally hot day. Why don't you say hi to someone next to you? If you're joining us online, we just wanna say welcome as well. So glad you could join us. Fantastic. Well, if this is your first time joining us this morning or maybe first time in a long time, we wanna say welcome to you. Uh, if you walked in, you would have passed our next steps counter. Uh, that's where you can go after the service, say hi to some of the team. If you have questions or you'd just like to meet some quality people, uh, or you don't have to look very far for that, but you can come to our next steps counter. We would love to say hi uh, and tell you a little bit more about our family here. Uh, it's one week into the uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. How's everyone going? Awesome, fantastic. I can feel the faith. 
No, it's been a great week. This Wednesday, uh, we had our prayer meeting at 7.30 right here. And it was a powerful time just uh, praying for needs and really just going after the presence of God. And we're doing that for the next two weeks as well. So this Wednesday night and the following Wednesday night, we have our prayer meeting. Uh, So make sure you come out 7.30 right here uh, for a powerful time together. Awesome. And some exciting news. I, I'm, I'm grateful uh, that we are in a church who celebrates uh, and, and empowers women to step into all that God's called them to do. Uh, and in a, in a month or so, our Flourish course for 2024 is coming up. Uh, registration is essential. You can do that at the information desk or online. But for more information on that, let's turn our eyes to the screen. Flourish help me live, thrive, grow, and have real joy, no matter what life throws at me. Flourish is a sisterhood community that is there no matter what. I'm excited for the course this year and excited to grow with like-minded girls. Flourish 2024 is going to be so fun and so fruitful, so get your registrations in. We'd love to see you there. Hey ladies, we'd love to have you at our Flourish course from the 18th of April to the 20th of June at our Danian on campus. Sign up now at our website, faithcc.com.au slash flourish. And if you have any questions, head on over to our info desk in the foyer. We would love to see you there. Awesome. Come on. It's a great time. So make sure if you're interested or have any more questions, you can come and find Natasha. Give us a bit of a wave. Although our whole team's up the front. Fantastic. Come and find us. We'd love to give you more information. Um, but we're going to come around our time of uh, tithes and offerings right now. There's plenty of ways you can give on the screen. And I just want to encourage you uh, very briefly from 1 Timothy chapter 6, where Paul instructs Timothy, Command those who are rich in this present world to not be arrogant nor put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Let's not put our confidence on things that are so uncertain because how easy it is when we look at uh, money to be, become that thing that starts to give us a little bit of self-assurance. But what Paul's instructing here is, no, no, even that is uncertain. So let's not do that, but let's look towards God and make sure He is first in all things uh, and in every aspect of our lives. So I want to encourage you as we come around our giving this morning, uh, that this is a time we can make that statement that He is above all things. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for the opportunity we have to sow into Your house. Lord, I thank You for the good fruit uh, uh, that flows from this house and that we are able to be a part of it. So we just bless every giver this morning in Jesus' Name. Amen. Amen. The buckets are on the end of the rows. You can pass those through. Thank you, host team. Uh, Easter is coming up. And so wanted to let you know, we have our 9.30 a.m. Good Friday services across all of our campuses. And then right here at Dandenong, uh, our 9 o'clock and 10.30 services, we're doing water baptisms as well. And so if you want to know more about that, or you know that you're ready to make that statement of faith in water baptism, then make sure you come and speak to us at the Next Steps counters or the info desk. We would love to uh, put your name down for that as we celebrate together what God has done in your life. And then Sunday night, what an opportunity it is to bring people along. Uh, We have a special guest with us, Jade Lewis, and her story is is powerful. And and so who knows that when we hear a story of what God has done in someone's life, uh, that it can encourage us, but it can also uh, speak to those who haven't decided to follow Him yet. And so that's our opportunity. That's an opportunity to bring people along. And so uh, make sure you put that down as I'm going to get that neighbour, that work colleague, that family member along. Uh, and it's going to be an incredible time. So, uh, but a little bit more, a bit of a teaser for Easter. Why don't we look to the screens?
I am so not creative. I never know when to get up. <laughs> there was a pause, and then I was ready, and then I had to back off. Uh, thank you for your prayers. My uh, ear is healing well. Um, it's one of those things, you know, you do many flights, and then for some reason, it just everything happens. But it was good. Uh, you know, every now and then in my marriage, I've been accused of selective hearing. <laughs> Frank is not here. Great. I can just... Uh... <laughs> and so... You know, when she was asking me to do stuff this week, well, it went in the bad ear, but when she was praising me, it went in the good ear. So, <laughs> you like that? So, uh, fantastic. Well, we're coming to the second week of our prayer and fasting and uh, really excited about this. I always find that this is a significant moment in the life of our church. I think sometimes when we are praying, we kind of are very reactionary. We are hoping that things change straight away. What I have found over the years that I've done this, I first started fasting when I was about 16 years old. Um, I remember years ago doing 40-day fasts. I can't actually do them now, but back then it was probably something that, that I did on a consistent basis. And I would say this, that when you fast and pray over concentrated moments of your life, they build a spiritual well that serves you for many years to come. And so you can understand that even if in, in this moment right now, it's not just about what's going to happen over the next few weeks but it's about building a depth and a strength and an anointing and a, a spiritual maturity over your life that serves you for many years to come. God, who knows that this is a quite a deep church. We have deep, this church has got deep spiritual wells. And so when we just lean in on that and really outwork what is part of this bride, it's amazing what God actually does. Uh, today, I want to speak to you about what are the signs of answered prayer? What are the signs of answered prayer? Because who knows that we serve a God who answers our prayers. Right? Our prayers just don't go into the atmosphere or we you know, pray to a God who doesn't listen, but we pray to a God who wants to respond to our prayers. So we're going to have a look at that today. But you know, going through all this heat wave, uh, it's always funny how the heat wave happens after, after um, summer. Uh, but last year, it was around the same time that we had a heat wave and there was a big heat wave in Adelaide. My dad turns 90, well, turned 96 this year. So my dad's 96, I think my mum's 86, and uh, they're doing really good. They're healthy, they're strong. Uh, God is blessing them with good health. And, uh, but I remember last year, around this time, they had a massive heat wave in Adelaide and my parents, the house that they live in, their, their air conditioner broke down. And so my dad rings me, he goes, oh, I, I was ringing him and I said, hey, how you doing? He said, oh, our air conditioner's broke down. I said, what, what is it over there? I said, tomorrow it's going to be 40 degrees. I said, you cannot be in a 40 degree house at your age uh, with the air conditioner broke down. So I said, I'm going to put you in a hotel. And uh, they said, okay. So I had some points because I travel a bit, had some points. And so I put him in a nice hotel in Adelaide, uh, you know, a multi-story hotel. They come from the era where there were motels. So it's the first time they were in kind of a, a multi-story hotel. So I said to the, the, the front desk, I said, hey, my parents are coming. Can you put them in a really high floor so they, they can see the view from Adelaide? So when they get to the, the hotel, they said, you're on the eighth floor or the ninth floor. Well, mum freaked out. She rings me. She goes, they want to put us in the ninth floor. Is that safe all the way up there? <laughs> I said, mum, it's safe. There's a lot of concrete between the ninth floor. You'll love it. Are you sure? I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I said, I want to be on the ground floor. I said, look, just trust me. Enjoy the high floor. You'll love the high floor. And the, the ground will be as solid as the low floor. You can even stomp your foot on the ground and you'll find that you'll be on terra firma. So they get up to the eighth floor. She rings me. It's amazing. And, you know, the, the, the view, she's loving it. And uh, now I know my parents. I know, you know, what they eat when I go and visit them in Adelaide. I open up their fridge. There's always not a lot there. And so they're quite frugal in the way that they eat. They're quite measured and, you know, their, uh, their dietary requirements. And so I said to the hotel, I said, here's my credit card, whatever they want, put it on the credit card. I said, now listen, Dad, I said, order room service and just enjoy for the next 24 hours. Well, when I got the bill back, <laughs> my Lord, did they enjoy. There was five entrees, three main courses, there were snacks, the mini bar was raided. I get the bill and I'm going, I ran my dad, I didn't know that you could eat that much. Well, since you're paying the bill, son, I was just, I just decided to go for it. 
And I was laughing my head off. You say, what's the point in prayer and fasting, right? Now, I know I'm talking about food but when you're praying and fasting, right? But this is the point. When it comes to prayer, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's just go for it in prayer. Let's go for it in expectation. Let's go for it. And we have a heavenly Father that loves us, that wants to give the best to us. So let's go for it. Um, James talks about we have not because we ask not. Um, you know, there are things that I've prayed for over our church over the last four to five years that I would say in this season that we're actually seeing the manifestation of. Uh, and I remember in the early days when we first came, praying over the things in our, in our church, one of the things that I prayed for that we would just have an explosive youth ministry. Our youth ministry is literally just going from strength to strength. And if I look at all the different areas in the life of our church, there is a favour of God. Listen, church, there is a favour of God upon this house right now. And I do believe that we as a church are living in a season of answered prayer. And my encouragement to you today is this, as it is for the house of God, so it can be for your own life as well. And this is the year of Jubilee. This is the year of thankfulness. And I'm just believing that at the end of the year that we are celebrating in thankfulness for the answered prayers over our lives, over our families and all the things that we are believing God for. And so as I was praying about this particular message, I thought, well, what are the signs of answered prayer? Uh, John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of Him. I pray that in this prayer and fasting, there is a confidence in you that God will answer prayers. Now there's this passage in 1 Kings where Elijah is praying for rain. We know this story well. Uh, Jezebel and her demonic prophets of Baal have got all of Israel under this demonic stronghold. And so Elijah comes and there's a contest in Mount Carmel where he talks about whether they believe that God, Baal is the real God or whether they believe that the Jehovah is the real God. And so they talk about how God comes down and brings fire down from heaven and burns up the altar. They destroy the prophets of Baal. And so Elijah now is praying for rain. And as I read this, I thought there were some great keys here for us to observe what are the signs of answered prayer. And we know this well, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 says this. It says, Elijah said to Ahab, go and eat and drink for there is the sound of a heavy rain. As we know that there was a drought upon the land because of what Jezebel was doing. Now that that issue was broken, they began to pray for rain. So Ahab went down to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, put his face between his knees. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. How many times have we said there is nothing there when there's breakthrough around the corner? But seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot, go down before the rain stops you. Verse 45. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose, a heavy rain started falling and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came upon Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. If you take your notes, write these down. What are the signs of answer prayer? Number one, the seasons are changing. The seasons are changing. You can see the way things move. The atmosphere, what was hard was now easy. What had no momentum there was now momentum. I would say this, there is a seasonal change in our church right now. A seasonal change of souls, of blessing, what God is doing. Think about it, Elijah was praying for a cool change. A cool change was coming and with that atmospheric change, what was hard and hard ground would now become soft and pliable. And I began to think about that when it came to the Old Testament here. What was the answered prayer for a seasonal change? It was a storm, wasn't it? It was a storm. The nation needed a storm. Think about this. Elijah is praying for a storm. The storm was an answer to prayer. 
You know, there are times in the Word of God that storms have different purposes in the Bible. When you and I think about storms, and I guess I want to challenge you on this idea today. When you and I think about storms, we often think about storms in a bad light. But I would propose to you today that when we think about seasons that we go through, we often think that they're either good seasons or bad seasons, rather than saying that God can work through any season. God can work through any season, right? Here in Elijah, the storm was a good thing. A storm was coming, there was drought, there was no rain. They needed a storm. The Bible says that the the clouds grew black. In other words, it was going to be big. It was going to be monstrous. It was going to be significant. There would be a rain. There would be a downpour. And so the answered prayer was a storm. And yet in other parts of the Word of God, a storm was a bad thing. The Bible speaks about the, the disciples in the boat with Jesus. Right? He's asleep in the boat. The disciples are freaking out. There's a storm that's coming up. On the lake, they wake him up. We're all going to drown. We're going to die. He goes, just settle down. He goes, I've got everything under control. There's another time that they're in the, in the lake and they begin to see Jesus walking on water. What about Paul? How the, the whole ship was shipwrecked because of a storm. And yet it was in the very purpose of God. There are times that we look at storms in our lives and we go, there are horrible things. But here, the storm represented either a good thing or a bad thing. It was irrelevant because God was using a storm for His glory and for His purpose. The elements, the circumstances that God uses to answer our prayers. Now, I'm not a chemist here, so I'm going to venture into dangerous territory. But think about some of the elements that fire needs or that creates fire. Oxygen promotes combustion. Hydrogen is an explosive gas. But to put them together, they create water to actually put out fire. The elements that are used upon the earth. And I guess the challenge for us today, the question is not the storm or the fire or the water, but to have confidence that no matter what God uses, God will still fulfill His purpose, no matter what fire or what storm we are actually going through in our lives. At times I hear Christians, they speak, oh, I'm going through a bad season. No, maybe there's a season that God is doing something. I'm going through a good season. And so they get slack and they walk with God. Can I just say this to you today? My faith is such that God can walk through any season. It doesn't matter whether I walk through fire. The Bible says about the three men in the Old Testament that were thrown into the fiery furnace. The Bible says that God used that fire to get a revelation to the king at that time. Time And so the answered prayer in Elijah's day was really a seasonal change. You know, one of the things I've realised in my own prayer life is that I've just made a decision that if I don't like what's going on, I'm simply going to pray a prayer of of change. Sometimes I don't know what to pray. You know, sometimes... I've prayed prayers in my younger years that I thank the Lord that God hasn't answered. I thought, God, if you would have answered that prayer, that would have been disastrous for me. So sometimes in our limited wisdom and understanding, we pray for things that God says, yeah, but you don't know the future that I know the future, so I'm not going to answer that prayer, but I'm going to answer that prayer. And so one of the things we've got to understand is that when you and I are in a season that we may find is frustrating and challenging and difficult. And we don't want to be where we are or we say we are not quite there. One of the most powerful things that we can pray is that say, God, just bring change in my life. Either change the season or change me. But God, I pray, let there be change. I think unanswered prayer is where things stay the same. I think unanswered prayer is when nothing changes. An answer prayer is when just life is exactly the same. But when we pray for change, we can believe that God will respond to those prayers. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8 to 11, think about this idea how God uses elements and things for His purpose and for His glory. Uh, I was reading this in Isaiah, this great prophetic word. It says, remember this, keep it in mind, take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. 
I am a God, there is no other. I am God, there is no one like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Listen to this. From the east, I summon a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I've said that I will bring about, what I've planned that I will do. I think I've shared this a while back, but really we think about, we make it about the elements that God makes about his purpose. Okay. Seasons change. Circumstances change, but the thing that remains the same is the purpose of God in our lives. And so now I pray, say, God, if you can, and he's talking to Israel here who are struggling with the fact that God was using a godless king to actually fulfill his purpose in Israel's life. So all the theologians back then, they're freaking out going, how can you use a Babylonian king to actually fulfill your purpose? And God says, I can use whatever I want in ever any capacity that I want, in any circumstance that I want, to outwork my purpose in your life. I would take a far off nameless man, someone that you would never rate to fulfill my purpose. I would take a bird of prey to actually fulfill my purpose. All the elements on heaven and earth are under my feet and I will fulfill my purpose in your life. We just have to get our head out of this idea that seasonal things and if circumstances line up, we put too much weight on circumstances. God can change a circumstance in an instant. He can shift things in a moment. Be confident in this prayer and fasting season of the purpose of God in your life. Here's another thought. Any season, I believe, is an answered prayer from the previous season. Any season is an answered prayer of a previous season. Because here, they were praying for it, they were praying for breakthrough. A storm came. It was the result of an answered prayer. The second idea is this, is that when it comes to looking for the signs of answered prayer, is that often at the beginning, the victories are small, but they are still victories. The victories, we look for the big answered prayer. We look for the big moment, then everything changes. But God gives us the small victory before the big one. The Bible says, Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, put his face between his knees. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there. How many times have we said, there is nothing there? Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. The small cloud became the big cloud. Can you believe when you begin to see small things that they'll materialise into big things? The small speck in the sky. It's that first small result. It's that first small opportunity. It's that first small breakthrough. It's that first small sign on the scan that possibly it is going to be all right. You know, I remember the very first time God spoke to me for many years that one day I'd become a preacher. I remember the very, very early days I got invited to do a, 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 a church in country Adelaide. It was about four hours out of Adelaide and I was asked to preach in this church of about 30 people and uh, it was my first sermon. You know, when it's ever your first sermon, it takes you six months to write one sermon. It takes me about six hours or eight hours now. It took me about six months. And so I was trying to pack everything and I was freaking out, get up there. And I'd prayed for 40 days. I was ready to preach and to get up there. And I would say this, the sermon was an absolute disaster. <laughs> right? No one laughed at my jokes. Um, it was deathly quiet. And I got off in the end and I thought it was just terrible. And I thought, I'm not meant to be a preacher. And I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to me when I was probably only in my early 20s. He goes, do not despise the days of small beginnings. Do not despise this. Everything started with a small beginning. And often with answered prayer, it is a small beginning. What, it, what looks small to us is often small from our perspective. Small from our perspective. I have this as one of my other points, but I'll combine it in this one. Is that, you know, I did some research on clouds and I'm not a cloudologist. Is that right? Well, person that researches clouds, but what I, I did kind of do a bit of research and what looks small to you in reality could be up to two to three kilometres long. 
So what looks, looks small to you from your perspective, potentially could be something that God is building behind the scenes from a significant perspective. You know, there are times that we've counseled people, you know, when it comes to their marriages, and then we've caught up with the, part, with the, uh, the, the partners individually. And uh, I mean, one time talking to a particular you know, person that they were saying, oh, you know, I'm just starting to see some small changes and I don't know if I'm really happy with that. And I said, but you don't know the big mind shift that happened behind the scenes in order to see that small behavioral change. Often we want the big thing without actually understanding behind the scenes, there is something that is small, but the background is incredibly significant. One of the keys, and I guess there's a couple of things I want to land today, but one of the keys I think is incredible for us in this prayer and fasting period, and this is what Elijah did with his servant, is that it's not just about praying, but it's about praying and looking at the same time. Because what I see here is that Elijah, the Bible says that he put his head between his knees. Now, I'm not going to try and do that because I'll probably tear a hammy, so I'm just going to sit down here, right? But here, Elijah's praying, right? He is praying. And he is praying. There is nothing there, and he is praying. He's interceding. He is going for it. He's removed all the spiritual obstacles. Now that all that remains is actually prayer. And so he starts praying, saying, God, will you move? God, will you send a rain upon the nation? Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and break this drought in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I, well, we didn't say in the name of Jesus because Jesus wasn't born back then. But, but in the name of God, we pray, Spirit of God, that you would come and move. Then he would pray and then he'd look. See, what you and I do is we pray, we don't look. We keep praying and praying and praying with no expectation. We just pray as a matter of discipline. We pray as, as, a, as a matter of routine. We pray as a matter of doing the right thing. But I want to ask you today, do you pray and look at the same time? Because here Elijah prayed and then he sent his servant to look. And I think the two are very powerful. They go hand in hand, right? If you're a business person here today, let me just speak this over business people. You've been praying that God will bring you breakthrough. You've been praying that God will shift things in your business. You pray, you pray, you pray. It's time like Abraham to look at the stars and begin to see the small opportunities that God is bringing into your world. You see, if you don't look, you miss the cloud as small as a man's hand. How many times have we prayed for things and we miss the small opportunity because we're so focused on the prayer that we are not looking with expectation of what God is actually doing? He prayed and he looked. He prayed and he looked. He prayed. He was looking for the breakthrough. He was looking for things to align in his favour. He was looking for a moment where the Holy Spirit would breathe life upon his eyes and he'll begin to adapt those things and take hold of those things. God comes to Abraham and he says, you're going to have descendants as many as the stars in the sky. God didn't speak to Abraham once about the promised child and what would result as a result of that. But God spoke to Abraham a number of times. Look to the ground, Abraham. See, the sand, as many as the sand on the seashore will be your descendants. God not only challenged Abraham to have a wonderful, vibrant relationship with him, but encouraged him to look to the stars and see what God could actually do. I believe this year that as you pray and look, you are going to see opportunity that you have never, ever seen before. That there is an opening of spiritual eyes, praise God that you'll begin to see things, a shift in people's attitudes. All of a sudden, a deal that you have, oh, I love deals. <laughs> a deal that you've never seen before because you've actually got your head out of your own circumstances and you are looking ahead to see what the Holy Spirit is going to do. You know, this miracle that's happening in one of our campuses right now, I have been looking for five years, looking, 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 looking. I know it's out there. I know God is going to move. I just got to keep looking. Some people are the other way. They look, but they don't pray. That ain't going to work. You're just going to keep looking into the atmosphere and see nothing. But prayer and looking are two powerful things. The last one is this. He said, he goes, and I want the musicians to come. He goes and looks seven times. Seven, the number of completion. 
The last idea here is that the servant went back and he looked seven times. And on the seventh time, Elijah knew his prayer was answered. He saw the cloud and then it was on for young and old. Seven, there's a number of completion. You keep looking, keep going, you keep praying. You don't see the beginning signs and you stop. We often stop when we see the first sign of breakthrough. We often stop when we see the first sign of relief. We back off when we experience the first sign that things are changing. That is the worst time to stop. You keep going, you keep praying, you keep believing. Look at another time in the Word of God where this time it's about Elisha. Elisha's on his deathbed, wants to bring victory to the king. He calls the king to his chamber. He says, I want you to strike the arrows. The amount of times you strike the arrows be the amount of times that God will give you victory over the enemy. Look at this in 2 Kings 13 verse 18. He said, take the arrows. The king took them. Elisha said, strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and he said he should have struck the ground five or six times. Then he would have defeated Aram, completely destroyed it. But now you'll only defeat it three times. The king said, three's enough. I'll just do the minimum. I'll just do what is required to get it over the line. Church, that is not the way that God wants us to live. I'll just do enough in my prayer to get it over the line. I'll just do enough in my commitment to the Lord just to get it over the line. We serve a God who is more than enough. We serve a God who is more than enough. And I just think with the mentality of just, just getting it over the line, I just don't think that we ever really walk into the fulfillment of the breakthrough that God has for our lives. I say this personally because... I know some of the big things in my life, when I want to see shifting in those things, I go after them in prayer. Not just over a month, sometimes over years and seeing things change. You know, the Bible says in Genesis, when God created the atmosphere, God formed the firmament, the atmosphere, where now things could live and breathe and thrive and grow. That word in Hebrew literally means he hammered out the atmosphere. Almost like a blacksmith would hammer out something that is shaping. What you and I often do in our prayer life, and especially when we want to see change in life, we just think the one big hammer is going to work. I'm just going to go once, going to whack it once, and hopefully it'll all come into play. Versus the little tapping along the way that begins to see gradual change. And what happens with us is prayer is like that. There are moments that you cry out to God and say, God, I want to have a shift in those things. And God comes supernaturally and blesses you. But I would say this 90% of prayer that sees significant things move in our lives is like the way that God created the atmosphere. We're just tapping away, chipping away. A little hammer here, a little hammer there. And then we look back and we see that there has been a momentous shift because of the constant prayer, not just the single prayer. God wants you and I not to strike the the ground three times. He wants us to go again and again and again and again. Keep going after the same thing. Don't Don't go tired in our prayer. Pray without ceasing. Keep pressing in. Keep going deep with the Holy Spirit. Make it a part of your walk with God. They're saying, come on, God, I want to see, you know, there are often there are four or five things that I pray for over our church every year. And every year they change because every year I find that God actually answers those prayers. But at the beginning of the year, I've written four things down in our church. I won't tell you what they are, but I've written them down. These things that I believe that our church needs to shift in. But every day, come on, God, change that thing. Move that thing. Bring that right person in. A bird of prey, an unknown man, bring these people th- Bring these things together. I know that your purpose is to bless this house. I keep going after the same thing again and again. And I feel the anointing, even as I'm saying this, that we just don't do minimal in our prayer, but we pursue the Holy Spirit. We go after these things. We say, God, we want you more and more and more. And the shifting, the hunger, the desire over many days begins to shift things. 
the widow with the unjust judge. Keep going back. Come on, God. I'm not happy with that. It's not that God wants to make it hard for us. But when we do that, there's something that actually changes in us. There's a, a stability and a strength and a depth that we never, ever have had before. You value things that you go after. We live in a generation where you want everything to be easy, right? But you value things that you have laboured hard in. And not because it's a works thing. God wants to bless us, but there's something that happens within our character and our nature and the stability of who we are. You know, tonight I'm going to be preaching about out of that passage out of 1 John about having confidence. The Bible speaks more about having confidence in the New Testament about the way that we approach God. I believe that God is going to release spiritual confidence in people tonight. A confidence that God is with them and that God is going to break through. But that confidence is shaped and developed over a hunger to go after the things of the Holy Spirit. Signs of answered prayer. Look for the small things. Pray and look. Don't just pray, but pray with an expectation. Look for the seasonal changes. Some of you don't know what to pray. So you say, pray, God, just change things. Either change me or change the circumstance. But sometimes you pray for a change in the circumstance and God says, I need to actually change you. There are a few things that you know, are really limiting you. You keep butting your head against the wall. There's a capacity in you that I want to break through. And so I'm going to change some things in you. So I now say, God, I don't know whether it's the atmosphere, the circumstance, or whether it's me, but Spirit of God, I just pray that you change me. God, just bring change in my life today. And I believe over these 21 days, as we do that, I believe this year, 2024, the year of thankfulness, the year of answered prayer is going to be a year of change for many people in the life of this church. As we thank Him, as God begins to shift shift us and change us, that will be different than when we first started this year. Amen? I want you to stand to your feet. I want us to sing this song again. I'm going to do an altar call today. I'm going to open up the altar. I'm going to have pastors that are going to pray for you. But this is more about you coming to God saying, today, if you need change, if you need change, maybe God is saying, you need to change. Or maybe right now there are some circumstances that need to change. But I want to pray today that you will have faith for the change. That there is faith in your heart that things are going to change. Some of us, we've had things the same way for so many years. We can't even believe, can God actually change things? Yes, He can. Yes, He can. And I pray over this fasting period in the last two weeks that are left, that as you come out the front and we just begin to worship God, which be so, Holy Spirit, I pray that You would give me faith for change in these next two weeks. God, I pray that You would change something, that You would break something, that You would turn something around. Today, if You want change, You say, Holy Spirit, I pray, let there be a breath of Your Spirit in me in this area. Then as we sing this song, come out the front, we're going to worship God. And I just believe that God is just going to release something into the atmosphere today. Come on, if that's You, why don't You come as we continue to worship God. Thank You, Holy Spirit. Come on, why don't You come? Thank You, God. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands today. Hallelujah. Come on, worship Him today. I want the pastors to come and come on, which begin to pray. I said, Andrew, why don't you come? Some of the connect group leaders. Kay, why don't you come? Kay and George, why don't you come? Where's Grace and Abil? Why don't you come? Some of our youth pastors that are here, come on, what are we going to pray?
You know, there's, a, there's a number of our people in our church at the moment that are, that are quite sick, they're quite unwell. I want us to pray that there is a, a physical change. Not just a spiritual change, but a change in atmosphere and a change in circumstance, but there is a physical change in their body. I don't know about you, but I can believe for a physical change in healing, a phys- physical change of things going the wrong way, all of a sudden they reverse, they're going the right way. A physical things, the things that are broken are now being restored, that we are celebrating a year of health and restoration, the life of our church in the name of Jesus. And if that's you today, if you say, you know what, I need a physical change, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. We're going to pray for you today. If you know someone that right now, you know, it's amazing how we can be going down the right path and all of a sudden one physical thing can just completely just change priorities, change everything. Pray today, we serve a healing God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Today, Jesus not only bore our sin, but He bore our sicknesses, our diseases, our brokenness on the cross once and for all. Today, I don't put my faith in the church, I put my faith in Jesus Christ, who's the author and the finisher of my faith today. 
And Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, let's begin to pray. Father, we pray in this atmosphere of faith today. God, people that are believing you for healing right now. Father, we pray for a change, a physical change in the name of Jesus. God, that you would come and bring breakthrough today. Father, that you'd come and bring healing today. God, we pray that you'd come and bring an open heaven today. In the name of Jesus, God, people that are sick in body, God, even right now are in hospital, we command them in the name of Jesus, God, for your healing power to come and touch them today. God, long-standing issues. God, issues, Lord God, that have plagued them for years. Father, we can pray, let there be a change in Jesus' name. God, we pray for healing and wholeness, Lord Jesus. We thank You, God, that the work You did on the cross is a complete work. It's not half a work, it is a complete work. We receive that today in Jesus' Name. Just for every head is bowed and every eye closed, you can put your hands down. Maybe there are people here today, you, you don't know the Lord, your life is not right with God. I'm not asking today whether you're religious, but whether you really know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, whether He is the Lord of your life. Today, if you can't say that, if you can't say that your life is in God's hands, then I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's a prayer to ask Jesus to come into your life. We acknowledge that He's our Saviour. He's the only one that can help us. He's the one that has made a way for us to be in right relationship with God again. And today, if you're in this place, you don't know Jesus or you've never, ever surrendered your life to Him. They're going to pray a prayer. It's a prayer for God to come into your life. And if you're in this place today, say, Matt, will you pray for me today? I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Saviour. I want Him to lead me. I want to give my all to Him. Then on the count of three, I want you to lift up your hand. One, two, three. Anyone in this place today, you don't know God, or your life is not right with God, all over this place today before we move on. Over there, God bless you. Someone else here today, lift up your hand. Once I see you can put it down. Wonderful. Other people here today, your life is not right. We're not asking whether you're religious. Let's just put that aside. Right? That's not what we're talking about today. I'm asking whether you know Jesus personally whether you have walked with Him. And if you don't, then God wants to lead you today, wants to guide you. Wonderful. All right, we're going to, people that have raised their hands, we're going to pray this prayer. If you raise your hand today, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. The prayer that you pray today is not the end of your journey with God, it's the beginning of your journey with God. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I ask You today to come into my life, to forgive me of my sin and all my past. I want to follow You be my Lord today. In your name, amen. Just to give these wonderful people a great hand today. Absolutely wonderful. A couple of things I want to encourage you to do. Number one, if someone brought you, tell someone. Number two, if you don't go to church and you live in the area, this is a great church. Get plugged into a Bible-believing church. Number three, we want to give you a Bible. These things that I read out today, we're out of the Word of God. The Bible is God's roadmap to our life. We want to help you with that. Isn't it wonderful? What a great sense of God today. Amen. I'll tell you what, we're in for a great prayer and fasting. Can I encourage you, if you don't normally come to the prayer meeting, but they go for one hour, they are actually phenomenal. They just set you up for the rest of the week. Wednesday, 7.30 to 8.30, one hour. Come along, it's going to be amazing. Don't forget tonight, I'll be bringing the Word again. Have a great rest of the day. Survive the heat and uh, thank the Lord for air conditioning. Praise the Lord. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.